Four days of no weather, as if nature had conceded its genius to the indoors. They'd closed down the Bureau of Sad Endings, and my wife sat on the couch and read the paper out loud. The evening edition carried the magic death of a child, backlit by a construction site sunrise on its front page. I kept my back to her and fingered the items on the mantel. Souvenirs only reminded you of buying them. The moon hung solid over the boarded-up hobby shop. PK was in the precinct house using his one phone call to dedicate a song to Tammy, for she was the light by which he traveled into this and that. And out in the city, out in the wide readership, his younger brother was kicking an ice bucket in the woods behind the Marriott. His younger brother, who was missing that part of the brain, that allows you to make out with your pillow. Poor kid, it was the light in things that made him last. Tammy called her caseworker from a closed gas station to relay ideas unaligned with the world we loved. The tall grass bent in the wind like tachometer needles and he told her to hang in there, slowly repeating the number of the job info line. She hung up and glared at the Killbuck sweet shop. The words that had been running through her head, employees must, must wash hands before returning to work, kept repeating and the sky looked dead. Hedges formed the long limousine a Tampa sky could die behind. A sailor stood on the wharf with a clipper ship, reflected on the skin of the bell pepper he held. He'd had mouthwash at the end and could still feel the ice-blue carbon pinwheels spinning in his mouth. There were no new ways to understand the world, only new days to set our understandings against. Through the lanes came virgins in tennis shoes, their hair shining like videotape, seeing us into a kind of sleep we hadn't tried yet. Each page was a new chance to understand the last and somehow the sea was always there to make you feel stupid. <laughs>